Okay, come on. Ow. So we're ready to get the patio completely planted up for the fall so we went to Sherwood's Forest and they had so many beautiful things just in bloom still you guys they literally still had hydrangeas with white blooms on them and they also have the little lime punch from proven winners new for 2022 in case you're in the st louis region and you're looking for them they have them at sherwood's forest nursery now let me get in close and show you guys some of the beauties that i snagged now this is not everything that i picked up you guys i wanted to pull out what i was using for the patio now you guys i love the fact that they had these beautiful artisan pumpkins and the thing that really caught my eye that really just made me just stop dead in my tracks you guys was these mums i try to look for mums that you're not going to see everywhere we all see the cranberries we all see the pinks and the mobs and yes i'm a fan of all of those because i always put some form of yellow mum in my garden and i also use some form of cranberry mum in my garden every single year those are staples to me but you guys when i seen these mums here they stopped me dead in my tracks now we're going to be planting up these big pots over here and i'm really excited because one i had to condense the area because they have to be able to get up to my patio in order to fix that piece of siding that blew off with the heavy wind but then in addition to that I have to be able to come in and service our ac unit and tuck it away for the winter time so what we're going to do is we're going to get these babies potted up but you guys I just only showed you a small little piece, a small little piece of what's going into these containers. Now, let me show you guys the, mm. for it. Yes, we're going to be popping these big sisters inside of these containers. And when we get done, they're going to be gorgeous. Now, it is getting a little bit cold. Go ahead and hand me my coat. Because, baby, we're about to rock this clean on out. Do you hear me? We ain't got no time for the weather or nothing. Or Nathaniel. We ain't got time for nothing to be stopping us today, honey. Because we're about to plant up this area. And I am just... Ugh, excited about it because we're gonna set a whole vibe over here on this patio now let's go ahead and let's get started
my boys bought these topiary poodles for me for Mother's Day. So, I really have not done a lot of trimming on them because I want them to fill out. But, I can see that I have some pieces that are starting to get really long. So, what I'm going to do is just slightly come in and just barely trim that back. And just kind of just trim it. Um, so, that way you can really see the shape. And then I'll go more aggressive in the springtime. So, just by just barely going in, just touching the surface, you can really trim these up. But I'm definitely looking forward to next spring where I'll have a real good show with these. And then by then, my uh, arbs will have put on uh, some growth. Work late into the night last night and then it was time to go in start preparing for the next day eat dinner so on and so forth I have a few more things that I need to put in place so I'm going to show you guys how I prep my mums in order to get my mums to bloom through the remainder of the season now you can do these for your mums if they are in containers more so in containers um, where you just take the nursery pot and just plop it down. You know, you pay a little bit more extra money for that decorative pot and you don't have to worry about, you know, trying to source out your own concrete pot, your own terracotta pot, so on and so on. But I use the same method when I'm actually planting them inside the soil because with moms, you want to make sure that moms do not dry out. That's how you get that continuous bloom. I'm not using a decorative nursery pot. What I will do then is I will take my moms and I will soak them the day before planting. And then when I go in to do my usual watering for my containers and they're fine and they continuously bloom throughout the season. So let's go ahead and prep those and I'll show you what everything is looking like. I don't know if you're excited to see what the finished result of this area was. But if you are, drop down in those comments and let me know. Let's go over here. Let's prep the moms. I have everything set up. We'll get them in their place. And then I'll show you what this area looks like in full force. guys think like thoughts let me know what you guys think about this area i am totally obsessed so 
let's take it back to this window box and i'll show you how i tie everything in silver and blue window box giving us those blue shades those green shades and then you also have the white shining through but also you have those pansies just slightly peeking out in between all of the foliage that we have for our autumn our fall color here on the patio and if you look at the pansy you see you have the purple you have the pale kind of like deep yellow as it fades but then you also have that mauve color that mauvey kind of like pink so when i seen these moms i knew that it would be perfect now i had already planned to go in and use a lot of foliage a lot of textures for the fall so we have our primo wild 13 peach berry ice hookara or coral bells you guys and those shades of like that mauvey peach color you can see the burgundy undertones just coming through and shining completely picks up the pink and the mauve completely ties our window box in i use the ornamental cabbage with the purple undertones and you can pick up those deep purple hues and you can also see the pink veining as well Play with the color tones and put the green back in this area i wanted the window box and i wanted the concrete urns to be independent of the understory here so that way they play nicely together and when you look in this area you're drawn in by all of these deep dark colors still drawing your eye in it's still tying everything together and doing such it ties everything nicely together so it doesn't look like everything's mismatch and hodgepodge which in some variations in some situations there is nothing wrong with that but i wanted everything to play nicely to marry together so these spirals really should be placed in the ground but you can use them in a container as well you guys we have a nice big barrel where it's a lot of soil insulating the root ball my juniper poodles here i did not pull those out they overwintered in these same containers last season and as you guys can see they made it through the winter and we had some days which really got really extremely cold now i'm not gonna say i was not in there biting my nails but they made it through and that's because typically in order for you to overwinter a plant in a container you want to give yourself a two zone stretch so if it's zone three then you want to at least be in zone five <laughs> I'm so excited. Fall is one of my favorite seasons of the year. It's almost like a second spring to me and I plant as though it is a second spring. What we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna plant up a beautiful container. Now, I do have another one of these containers and it's gonna mirror the same way that this container is, but for right now in this video, we're only gonna plant up one. And then the next time you see these beautiful containers, we'll be putting them in the place that they're going to be going in the garden. Let's get started building this container. Now, because I have a very long season here in the fall in the St. Louis region, I do go ahead and I do add slow release fertilizer. The reason being, again, is because in the St. Louis region, we have a very long fall time you are new to my channel welcome and thank you for clicking on this video and i'd like to invite you to subscribe i have my slow release fertilizer in here already i am going to add a little bit more now let's start building this container first plant here we have a beautiful mom you guys and every year in my garden i feature a ton of moms you guys Now I've done videos before where I show you guys how to have a long season with your moms. 
I'll go ahead and I'll link that in. We're gonna come in with one of the favorites that I love to use in my fall containers, which are cabbages, kales, you guys. They are just such a beautiful addition. And I like to get them on the bigger side because then that way you have instant impact. Sometimes when you have your kales, you'll have where the leaves are starting to yellow, like this one here. No big deal, you just go in and you wanna just take that off. And this one is gonna go in the back here, but we'll put that in last. Again, with another mom here, you guys. All right, there we go. This is exactly how I want it to be. And with a yellow mom. Now, one of the things that I like to do in my containers, I love to marry together the two seasons. So I'm coming in with those bright colors as well. And this baby is gonna go right here in our container, you guys. And another cabbage here. All right, you guys, so let me turn this beauty around. You guys, this container is so heavy, but it's full and it's beautiful just the way I like it. Go in and I'm gonna make sure, so you wanna slightly go in and as, I'm, as I was building, I was making sure I had everything tucked in, but you wanna just give it that once over. So I'm just going around the front and I'm just tucking everything in, making sure everything fits nice the way that I want it to be. Now this one here is a little bit too high, so I wanna just go in slightly and nicely up underneath the bottom here and just come in around the side here and I'm just tucking these in slightly and see, makes a difference. All right, so a couple of tips and tricks in order to help you keep your mom's looking beautiful throughout the season. Now, when you pick your moms, you wanna pick moms that are not fully bloomed out. If I was picking a mom that was completely bloomed out, I would only be using that mom maybe for like an event that I was planning and I wanted that full flower power in order to give a beautiful display to my guests. But it, when you pick your moms, you wanna pick your moms in stages like this where you have some bloomed out and some not. That actually gives you a longer life out of your mom's hair. And right here, you see, if I was, you know, picking this mom out just for my patio, then I would kind of just let it open a little bit so I can see the color of mom that I'm getting here. But then I also want to make sure that you see that these buds are in different stages here. So you see, I have one that's kind of open. You see, I have one that's open more, but where your rebloom is going to come from your continuation of blooming your mom. And if you get down deep into this one, you can even see another bloom here. And this is why I like to make sure I use a slow release fertilizer. That way I make sure that my plants are continuously getting what they need in order to bloom out. And then when it's time, I'll just come in and I'll just pop the mom out off and just dead head it on out. And then you'll have your show. We head to the antique shop. We're gonna see what they have in there. And hopefully we come out with some goodies. The one I wanted to stop at is closed, so I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and head to the next one. now we have all of these moms so now we'll go ahead and take this back because we have no room to put anything if we were to stop at an antique shop and find something beautiful we just so happened to want some moms and i was looking for moms my neighbor was also looking for moms so i went ahead and i grabbed these ones for me aren't they angelic and then I grab the other ones for my neighbor. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead, let's give her hers, and then we'll hop on to the next task.
It's a peaceful day in the garden, making it the perfect day to tie up loose ends in the garden. So I thought I'll take today, plant up a few containers, as well as clean out some remnants of summertime. Just yesterday, I was walking through my spring garden. Gathering beautiful flowers for floral work for family, friends, as well as myself. The seasons don't last long and are ever changing. Slowly, we went from spring and then to summer. Now it's time to clean out our summer containers. It can be very hard to pull your summer containers, especially when we have so many weeks left with warm weather. And I really could just go in, give them a quick haircut, hit them with some fertilizer and they would flush back out so beautifully. But I'm anxious to start my fall show and that way I can enjoy the fall for everything that it's worth because I'm very excited about my show that's gonna happen this year. One of the things that I like to do, and this helps me so I don't hang on to containers longer than I should have them in my garden, I stop fertilizing them. If they continue to flush out and still look beautiful, then I'll let them live. If they start to phase out like these two have, then it lets me know it's time to pull them out and it makes it easier for me to go ahead and part ways with those summer blooms. I'm going to plant up a container to match the container that's sitting right beside it. It's going to be beautiful and it's going to add instant impact to this area. Now, once I put this mum inside of this first container, it's already going to start to shape the container up and give the container instant impact. When you're planting up a layered container like this, it's very important to make sure whatever plant you put in, you want to make sure you go in and backfill. Also, with your ornamental cabbages, remove anything that does not look desirable from the beginning. That way, you don't have to do it once the container is fully planted in. So like right here, you can see where I go in and I backfill the soil around this mum. It's very important. This is a very easy technique to do for your containers and it just makes for a beautiful container once everything is nicely tucked in. One of the important things to do is make sure all of the plants are tucked in at the end and sometimes you do have to use a little bit of muscle. We have the area all cleaned up. We have our containers planted. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and plant up a beautiful arrangement that's going to grace the table. Using this simple, beautiful, wooden woven basket. It's made for planting. Have some gorgeous roses. You guys, the camera does not do these roses any justice. I love roses, but most importantly, 
I love roses in the shades and hues of orange. And so I thought it would be so beautiful just to use one plant and make a loud statement. One of the roses popped off, but I'm gonna pick that up, set that to the side, and I'll show you what we're gonna do with that later. It's very important to make sure that once everything is planted up, especially with roses, you wanna go in, remove any type of dead leaves from the base of your container. Now we're gonna add a generous helping of moss. And I'm not gonna skimp out on the moss. I'm gonna make sure I add a lot because I want you to actually be able to see the emphasis on the moss here. nicely tuck in that small little rose that broke off. Isn't this gorgeous you all? By using one plant we're able to make such a large eloquent statement and believe it or not it actually cuts down on the cost of our arrangement here. absolutely kicking my butt so I had to hop out here real quick and I had to water my containers when you are watering in fall typically you don't need as much water as you would like you know during the normal planting season but when we have days like this like today where the wind is absolutely kicking my butt it's been windy all day long but that's okay so I hopped out here and I gave a mid watering I started to notice yesterday during the nighttime that the wind was kicking up but because it was going into night, I went ahead and I let the root ball set there. 
I got up early in the morning, I gave them a watering, the wind kind of picked up, and so I came and I gave them a midday watering. We are going to finally put the pumpkins in place that we shopped for recently. We went to a local pumpkin patch, shopped, we bought a variation of pumpkins, and we kind of set those off to the side. We came back in another video, we planted up these front containers. I have a menagerie of pumpkins lying down here on the bottom. Pumpkins that were left over from other planting projects here on the channel. So I want to go in, we're going to get our pumpkin stack together and then we'll move on to the next planting. I'm so excited because although I have these two containers right here, it's not official because I don't have my gatherings of pumpkins out here. And normally what I like to do is once I end up pulling like the majority of my pumpkins, if I see two pumpkins, I'll normally just drop those two pumpkins there till I change out, you know, my winter containers. Let's start arranging the pumpkins. You see, I have the stack here, right? So we're going to mimic these. Now in the last video, I still have my lights on. <laughs> Let me turn off my lights. Okay, so now we coming correct now. We, we, we're correct. With my pumpkin selection, I chose my pumpkin selection based off of design and contrast. So I knew I was going to be coming in with these soft yellow pansies to come around the doorway. So each year in my garden, yellow is always a color that I like to do in my garden, especially in the fall time and especially in that spring, you're going to see some type of yellow sprinkled throughout there. And most often you will see some type of yellow sprinkled somewhere in throughout there in my summer design. Yellow is a staple for me in the garden in the fall time, orange is another staple for me. So when I chose my pumpkins, I chose my pumpkins based off of what I felt like would complement the design. Now I started to come in as an alternative because every year when I make out what I'm doing for my garden, when I make my plans out the year before, I always have an alternative plan. So my alternative plan was to come in and use white and yellow pumpkins, but I was able to find the selection of pumpkins that I thought would really just accent this area and make it stand out on its own. What we have here is we have our pumpkin stack. So over here on this side, we wanna come in and we wanna do another pumpkin stack as well. So we're gonna start with this big pumpkin right here. Okay, we're gonna set this one right here in the front so it gives us that look and then we'll wipe this off real quick. Make sure we don't have any water inside of the pumpkin here because that's gonna only help it rot a little bit faster. Although the ground is wet, the ground will dry up. Perfect. So next one, size wise, I think we're going to go with the white here for our next stacker because it's our next biggest one. We'll have this one just come and lean into the side here. this one and I'll take this one out and I'll put this one right here and then I'll just tuck this one right here can you see like the repeat of pumpkins here you got the orange and you got the like the colors repeat just at a larger scale then we tuck the white one in here and the white one in there I have this beautiful grouping of moms here you guys these moms are absolutely beautiful and gorgeous they are just working their magic honey so we picked these up now it's time to get these in the ground but before we can get these moms in the ground i have some more in my car that i need to go get so let's go grab those
Don't these just look absolutely amazing? So these are going to be a perfect pair. Now, although these are white, you can see where they have like the cream inside and that's going to pair really nicely with our yellow mums here. So we're going to put these in in a design and we're going to get these popped into the ground here. There's a space right here that we have to work with. So we have a nice big size right here and it's going to complement all of our fall planting. Everything is going to be nice once everything gets planted and come together show you guys something so you see the bottom of this root ball now with your moms you can go in you can pull this apart but they're not really root bound you don't necessarily see issues with the plants being root bound except for the ones that come in those smaller cans so in order to have good results with your moms you want to make sure when you put them in the ground or when you put them in a container you want to make sure that they are well hydrated these are well hydrated i do have one that is not as well hydrated and i'll show you that in just a second but it's still going to be used and i guarantee you it's going to last the season actually in a couple days it's going to look absolutely amazing i know y'all see this walk of shame so these were all purchased at one time and for some reason this one right here was not getting water so we're going to let this plant soak up the water and we're going to pop this baby be in the ground right with the rest of them <laughs> we're gonna let it soak it in and it's going right on in there with us with, with his sisters <laughs> totally loving this the pansy here was the inspiration for the yellow and the white mums and i'm loving the way everything looks so we use the mums in an alternating pattern now the white mums are bloomed out a lot more than our yellow mums are here but that's perfectly fine they'll catch up with one another i'll shear them all back at one time so everything will work out in the end but i'm just totally loving this look now judging from this are you able to gauge which mom that was looking like it was on his deathbed like it was looking that it needed to just be put in a plant icu comment below and let me know but i am just loving this color this pop and it's really speaking fall to me i don't know drop down in the comment box and let me know are these colors speaking fall or are they speaking fall are they falling or falling <laughs> so yesterday we went ahead we got all of the terracotta pots moved out of this area except for the two terracotta pots that's real aged real antique you guys and they are very distressed i left those in place for right now but here is the skinny i had my husband run out to the storage unit and what he's going to do is he is going to bring back these two urns that I'm looking for and I want to use in this display not only in my fall but also in my winter display out here in this area but full disclosure I do believe the pots that I'm looking for the urns that I'm looking for it's a total of four of them right but I believe that those urns are actually at the back of the storage unit if they are in the back he will not be able to bring those back to me i am going to go ahead and work on these terracotta pots over here i'll show you what we're going to do and that's going to set the stage for the display over here this terracotta pot right here but then if we go on the other side you guys then you have this 
terracotta pot right here. In those terracotta pots, let me show you what we're getting ready to drop inside of those terracotta pots because you guys, it's, it's the end of the season and we definitely want to set the fall vibe out here but i don't want one area to look just like the other area so let me show you what we're going to do so you see these deer park ironworks baby so these are two deer park ironworks so here they are right here and you guys the large uh spiral temporary we have here so it gives you all the details in those you guys, I'm completely obsessed with the quality. Can you guys see how thick this is? But these are going to be the start of the show back here. You guys see the height of these? Here is the spiral topiary right there. So once we end up getting all of the concrete in place, it should not take him long to come back. Once he gets that, we'll get everything else in place. But what I want to do is go ahead and work on this display that's going right here. So you guys have seen the obelisk that we're going to be using in these areas. So we're going to go ahead and start with that display first. But you guys, when you guys see the amount of gores that we're getting ready to use for this display, you're going to be like, okay, girl, what is going on? So... Let me turn the camera around and let you guys see how many just small gourds that we're going to be using in this area. Can we say fall? Can we say fall for the people? <laughs> let me turn it around, baby. Yes, honey. We're going to take all of these pumpkins and gourds here. And we're gonna go ahead and start our display. I know that's like a ton of gores, but you guys, I have my mind set on how I want to do this. That's something that I do like every year I do some type of display where I use a ton of pumpkins and gores, you guys. And for me, I just love it because it's a way for you to express your creativity, you know, think outside of the box, do something that you wouldn't normally do. It's not going to take us long. Um, once we get, okay, hold on, here's my husband. Hello? Yeah, those pots way in the back. Okay, so just go ahead and grab me, um, two urns make sure they're tall and get a pedestal base to match them um because they're going back in the lion fountain area so just grab me something and whatever you grab i'll just have to deal with it it just needs to be like a light concrete color all right, I'll bring them right, up. all right it should be fine i think everything that he will have access to this close in the front should match with what we got going on here if not we'll deal with it and then change them out at a later time so let's go ahead and start on this pumpkin display My boy just came and told me that my husband is back with the concrete pot, so I'm going to run up to the front, see which ones he has in the back of the truck, and then from there, we'll go ahead and get everything set up. I'll show you guys what they look like in place, and then we'll go ahead and start planting up those urns. Go ahead and get these in place. Well, I mean, it's not too bad, but the color's a little bit off, but it'll definitely work. So, we have all of the concrete placed. Let me show you guys what this area looks like. Now, it looks so much different than how it was just a few weeks ago. You guys, it was full on summer. Everything was in bloom. And now we've reached those chillier temperatures where, I mean, right now, I'm just enjoying my harvest display and my fall uh, pumpkins and just kind of waiting for everything to kind of die out. But for me, I like to stay in the garden as long as I have the opportunity to do such. 
So let me go ahead and show you guys these concrete planters right here. First and foremost, this is the pedestal that he brought in. I put my low bowl here. And you guys, this was the low bowl that actually did not have a drain hole in it. So my husband went in and we have a drain hole all the way through. There is a seam right here and it may look like it's a crack, but it's definitely not a crack. That's the seam from the concrete. And as the concrete continues to be out in the element, that will break away, okay? Or you can come in and you can break that, um, you can break that off, okay? These are the concrete urns that my husband went ahead and brought in because these are technically are the pedestals that go with this piece. But I wanted my low bowls to be front and center. I wanted a taller urn to go here. And then I wanted another low bowl. And then I wanted just a plain textural bowl. I have our collection of concrete pots. And this is what we're gonna plant up in this area here. up and you guys it started raining so this area is saturated just in a little bit but I'm really loving the way my display looks now I am going to get in close and show you all what everything looks like so just keep in mind that it's really not the finished look because it's wet the soil is not dry I'm not able to really come in and clean it up and really give it a polished look but once the rain subsides and it has time to dry off a little bit i'll come back and i'll make sure i polish up all of my containers you guys and let's look at these containers here now i did not put my tall urns up because that urn probably would have been about this tall that's not the vibe that i was going for i wanted it to be more of a low profile because we just left out from a tall profile when you walk in this area so I'm very excited the way everything looks here. And you guys, we are just gonna have to just doll this area out for the winter. But I'm really loving the way the fall, the fall, our autumn look looks over here in this area, you guys. I came in with some ornamental kale, and then I went ahead and I did a matrix solar flare pansy. And you guys, those pansies get huge. That's why I love to use them, not only in my fall, but my early spring and my spring containers because they get massive. And so I, it's a must for me that I use them. In this area, I wanted to go heavy on my gourds and my pumpkins and my squashes in this area just to give that autumn feel. Now, for me, I like to celebrate autumn and fall until I get ready to switch over until my winter decor, my winter situation on the inside and on the outside of my home. What do you guys do? Do you cut your fall and your autumn decor off at Halloween or do you continue on into Thanksgiving? For me, I continue on into Thanksgiving and then the day after Thanksgiving, baby, it is on and popping because I like to drop my Christmas trees and things in. And let's get in close and look at this pumpkin display right here. These anti-terracotta pots, we went in, we put pumpkins galore, we put gourds, we put squashes. We really just stretched this Deer Park Ironworks obelisk all the way to the brim. And see, what I like about it is the quality is very strong and I knew and to have the strength that I needed to hold all of this weight, I was gonna have to come in with a heavy duty obelisk, you guys. And that's what I like about this look here. Drop down in the comment box. Let me know, are you done planting for fall? And also, I'd love to know what you guys think about these arrangements here. I almost forgot. 
we went ahead and we voted. It was a 96% vote over on my Instagram page at the underscore garden queen about the obelisk, you guys. So we are going to be giving away a pair because, baby, don't nobody want just no one obelisk. That's out. So I will be giving away a pair. I haven't decided um, which if we're going to give a tall pair, if I can get my hands on a round pair. Stay tuned to my YouTube community page as well as my Instagram page if you're not following me because that's what we're going to do the giveaway over on the Instagram page. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for hanging out with me and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. a Deer Park Ironworks stand-up planter. This does not have any drain holes in the bottom. And I don't want it to have any drain holes because this is gonna be sitting on a piece of wood furniture. I do not have a plate that's long enough to actually protect this. Now you can take a piece of saran wrap, put the saran wrap on the bottom. What you can do is when you need to water the plants, you can go in, you can water the plant, and then you can dry it off and set it back on the counter. Baby, I'm not about to play with my buffet. I, I'm just not about to do it. When I water these plants, I'm gonna have to be very precise. I'm going to be using a small watering can and they're gonna get direct watering. When I see the plants are unhappy, I'll go ahead and break down an arrangement because a couple of these items will last us for a very long time. So in that scenario, we are not going to be using any type of coffee filters because it's no need because it's no drain holes in the bottom of this. And what I like about this color in particular is I have a copper kitchen. Because I have the copper kitchen, this is absolutely perfect. So when Deer Park Ironworks sent this out to me last year, we ended up doing a giveaway over on my Garden Queen Instagram page, the underscore Garden Queen. If you're not following us, make sure you're following us there. They sent me out one. We put it together in a video. The rules were there for, you know, how you had to enter. But you guys, the chances to actually win was so slim because I want to say all in all, it probably was only like maybe four or 500 entries. Anybody can win with those type of odds. But yes, Deer Park Ironworks, I've talked about them in the past. I have a lot of different of my obelisks. I get asked about that all the time. Where are my obelisks coming from? And Deer Park Ironworks is a good resource for that. So start by putting some soil in here. Because you guys, this arrangement is going to be jaw dropping. This arrangement is going to be absolutely gorgeous. And we are going to pack this baby full. And another thing too is in the summertime, you guys, I did a, you know what? I'm not even going to steal that. So we'll just leave that one alone. Just in case I want to redo it over here on the channel. Okay, so we got our, our soil in there. I need a little bit more soil. Let me go grab an open bag. I think I got maybe some Pro Mix or something like that. Alright, so now that we have the soil in here, what we're going to do is we are going to be building this arrangement from back to the front. We have plants that's different levels. Let's just go ahead and get busy. I have these calla lilies here. Use these in my arrangement because they give us a lot of height here. And they're perfect for low light type situations. So I like them for that. 
So I'm going to kind of have that come in and that's going to be rested out in staggered. Frosty fern, you guys, this is the time of the year where the frosty ferns are out. I like the frosty ferns because all of the texture that they have in them. So it's one of the ones that I love to use in my arrangement. Now, already by just coming in and adding that frosty fern, you guys, we have a beautiful setup here. I think I want to come over a bit with my frosty fern as well as my uh, lily here. And I do have another lily that I can use if we don't end up having enough plants. Because this is a big container, so it's going to take a lot of plants to fill this up. Purple Passion Angel Plant. And actually, I want this to be here right here we're going to tuck that in right here have the purple here another cyclamen just like that the fern the frosty fern it's getting packed in as we're adding our plants we're coming back in and we're tucking the soil around so we're going to add our cyclamen in here. So the tritoscantia is going to go right here on the side, right here in the front. Where there's a space, we're going to do a tritoscantia. And so, like I have a piece that broke off, I'll show you what we're going to do with that, okay? So tritoscantia right there. One down here on this end, a tritoscantia as well. Now, let me look at it from the front. I am going to switch this one out, this one right here, because it has, it looks just a little bit more dramatic. Looks absolutely amazing. Liking how that's looking. Okay, now this Tritoscantia here, now you see how this Tritoscantia is fuller? We have a fuller plant here. So anytime I have a fuller plant, I do like to, you know, take advantage of that. So we'll swap this one out. All right. Don't want to mess up our cyclamen here. This is overall a better plant, a better look. Thing is tucked. It looks good from my end. How is it looking, you guys? Let me know. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna get this in. Know where the arrangement is going to be going. This is not finished. We're gonna go in and we are going to add a candle. It's not a real candle. It feels like a real candle. It has the texture of the real candle. It already has the burns in there, like it's a real candle. Can you guys see this? it comes up lighter than it actually is but i did not put the candles in place when i was outside because i knew we were going to be transporting this into my kitchen so yeah, let's get this in place move it over a little bit more but first let's set up the candle so candle setup is real simple you just have three triple a batteries that go on the bottom i wouldn't take the chance with using real candles only because i don't want to start a fire and i'm very big on fire hazards so that's why I prefer just to just spend a little bit more extra money and get some lifelike candles that, you know, have the flicker and everything. So let's get the first one set up. We're going to be using three AAA batteries per candle. And you can make the light stronger or less stronger. So that's the first one here. And then I also have the little small lights as well that goes with this set too. So when I buy these, I like to buy them in a set. Okay, and then I like to put, you know, have these set up. It just, you know, makes everything a little bit more intimate. There we go. They just kind of just flicker about. This down a little bit. 
when I was filling this up, I did not fill the soil up all the way in the back, only because I was concerned with the weight of it and having to carry it from outside, because this is a big container, so it's very, very huge. Just going to put the candles in place, but I do have to add a little bit of soil to raise it up. Just have my soil here in the bowl. That's going right here. We're going to just pop a votive candle anywhere you have a space you want to go ahead and pop a candle okay that looks like it should do it so I was very excited to change this planter out and moving into the fall vibes with the rest of the garden here now we came in and we used some beautiful pumpkin on a stick and then we draped the bottom in a beautiful kale around the perimeter and then we went in and we tucked in a deep sorbet viola I'm very 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 excited to how all of this is looking and one of the things I love in a fall garden is pumpkin and orange violas. Lately in the comment section, I've been seeing how everyone is not really a fan of mums. And I get it, they can be divas. You gotta keep them water. You can't overwater them. Not too much, too little. But sometimes I think we forget about that other fall plant that looks just as beautiful as mums and can take the place in your garden this fall. Let's head into the greenhouse to see the beautiful flower that I'm talking about. I'm sure you won't want to miss out on this. Look at this beauty. These are marigolds. They give an amazing show just like moms. So if moms have been something that you struggle with in the past, you don't have to use mums in your fall display. You can always use the marigolds and the marigolds come in the golds, the orange. Sometimes you can find them in a mix and you don't have to get the small one. You can use like these big tall African type marigolds. The only difference is your marigolds are not going to be able to take the frost like your mums will. And that's why mums are the plant of choice. But what we're going to do is we're going to be planting these beauties up. I've already gotten some outside. But before we continue to move these beauties from this area out to where they're going to be going in the garden, we need to prep this area. In the springtime, I use Dusty Miller in all of the varieties over here in this location. Now, one of the things that I can say is Dusty Miller will winter over in your various areas very, very easy. And then also, you can use the long stems when you overwinter them for beautiful arrangements throughout the holiday season. So like this stem right here is very long. You can have this coming draped out the side of a vase. And so over here we use different types of Dusty Miller. Let me cut this for us. 
Look at this long stem on this Cyrus Dusty Miller. It's one of those that I have successfully overwintered. I remember I had a few falls ago, I planted up a beautiful arrangement in my Dusty Miller. I did not pull those out. I want to say into like January or February because it was time to do something new. But absolutely love it. And look at how long this is. Like this easily can drape over like if we're using it right here, for example, this can easily drape over the side. And I love to use Dusty Miller inside of my Christmas containers. I love to use them inside of wreaths. They just, they make for a beautiful accent in your Christmas decor. And I just love to use them in early spring and I love to use them in fall. But even though they're beautiful, they're full, they can't stay here, they gotta go. I would love to stand out here, take all of these containers away. They have hydrangeas and Dusty Millers in there, but baby, we ain't got time for that. We ain't even got time, cause we gotta get the next display in. So what we're going to do is we are going to bring in the remote. Where's my remote? Oh, they, they trying to play with me. They trying to play with me. Where is my remote? Where? This is exactly the way that I need this area to be. We are gonna be transplanting the evergreens over here to this area. So I definitely wanna get done before darkness starts to set in because when we were potting up this container here, there were certain areas where you could not see because the shadows and the position of the sun and everything. I wanted to show you guys, this was left out. But look how long this stem is. Now had I had this on some netting or some support, I would have had a straight stem to use for a beautiful large flower arrangement. And if you've never seen my floral arrangements before, I love to do floral arrangements to the top. Set that down. Why is you moving that by yourself? I had to get it done. You was in there doing your homework, right? Yeah, but you still could have called me. Okay, well, I'm about done now. See, this one already moved. You moved that one by yourself too? <laughs> I did, but I just had to get it done, honey. It worked. When y'all was a little kids, I used to be out here moving them by myself. Dad was at work, honey. Mm -hmm.
planted the evergreens right here. Now, I am going to eventually come in and I'm going to take all of this back. But I'm waiting to see what the evergreen on my right, your left, does. And if it ends up flushing out by having sun from all angles, then I'll go ahead and I'll match this pair. I could have came in and I could have trimmed it back on the top of this evergreen right here on my right. I chose not to do such because remember we're transplanting and so you got to kind of choose between do I trim and transplant or do I transplant and just let it sit there. So for right now since it's in my backyard you and I both know what's going on so it'll be okay but if it was in the front. It's a 50-50 chance if I would have went ahead and trimmed it out. Down in the comment section, let me know what do you think about transplanting these evergreens. Let me know what you think about it as in position for this area over here. And you guys, it's going to be a lot of changes that's going to take place over here at this area. And I'm super duper excited about them and I can't wait for them to actually happen. Remember, it's with your evergreens, you want to make sure that when you transplant, fall is a great time to transplant because it has all of the rest of fall go in and get some healthy roots going. The thing of it is though, frost. If it gets cold real fast, it's, it's kind of risky. I probably should have did this about six weeks earlier. It's been warmer than what it normally is and that's what I like to say about the St. Louis region sometimes you get that bipolar weather so I have these roots saturated and I also use a starter fertilizer in order to help the root develop and it has some mycorrhiza in it so I'm excited about this So this is how you know that you've gotten all of your air bubbles out of here. So it's going to it's going to settle. You see it settling. This is what you want to see to make sure you get all of your air bubbles out.